Steve here with DIY Auto Tune Amp EFI, and today we're going to talk about our new drop on coyote harness for the Gen 1 and Gen 2 coyote engine family. Could probably actually get away with doing a Gen 3. We have not had one here in the shop yet. Uh, there's a couple major changes to the Gen 3, including a different uh, crank sensor. It moved to Hall Effect from VR. So, with those changes, um, some modifications to the harness may need to be done. We've paired this harness with our new Evo Plus HC um, blue connector there, pretty easy to pick out. This has eight high current uh, ignition drivers in it. Um, this means you don't have to have any external boxes. What's really nice about this ECU and harness combination is not only does it have the ignition drivers built in, but you can also control all four cams, full VVT, one box, nothing extra need to be added. Harness is done up really, really nice. We use a TechFlex covering, heat shrink on all the major joints. Uh, we do this because we, we just, we like that higher quality. It's a better fit and finish. Uh, every connection is going to have labeled heat shrink on it just to make it easy to identify. We took this harness and we had a engine, uh, you guys, may recognize the engine from the last video we did when we were talking about uh, Kurt's tow vehicle. Um, we currently have a red Mustang in the shop uh, with a coyote swap in it, and that is the vehicle that we're gonna be using the test mule this harness on here shortly. Now, this one, you'll notice a lack of relay box uh, that we had on our previous generation LS harness. Um, this one we're going to send without a relay box, and that's mostly to um, help keep the cost down on this one, even though it's a very nice harness. Not everyone needs a big relay box. We will have solutions for that available to add on to the package if you'd like to. We've taken this harness and we've optioned it out really, really nicely. Here uh, we have a connector for CAN bus or transmission control. Uh, if you want to use one of our transmission harnesses if you've got uh, transmission control going into the vehicle or any CAN bus enabled devices that you're going to add. Here we have a plug labeled O2 sensor. The reason why we did this is to keep things the same between all of our harnesses. Uh, this is a holdover from the previous generation LS harness. This has got a couple analog inputs and everything you need to wire up your wideband O2s uh, make that fairly easy. As we continue along, you'll notice here we have this extra jumper. We did this so that uh, th this connection goes directly from this junction up to this throttle plug on the, on the, the harness. You can option this harness in two ways, for a cable-driven throttle or a drive-by-wire throttle. Our drive-by-wire controller will be coming shortly. Just to make things nice and easy, uh, we've added that in so that you can option the harness either way. We've given you plenty of length on the harness so that you can mount the ECU in the cab of the vehicle if you desire. Um, get it through the firewall. Uh, when I did this design, never know uh, what vehicle a swap is going into. So instead of being a side entry harness like most of your stock harnesses are, this is a rear entry harness. Uh, so the, the joint goes on the back of the intake manifold uh, over to both valve covers. We have everything split out. Uh, this harness is, is fully optioned with all the connectors necessary for a full install. Um, like I said, it's, it's ready to go for all four cams VVT so you don't have to lock anything out. On this side, this will be the passenger side harness. Uh, it's just on the left, the way it laid out. Uh, we have a couple of extra optioned plugs. Now, a couple of them are not options. A couple of them are required. Your intake air temp sensor, we decided to put on a DTM connector. Never know where someone's going to put their air temp sensor on the intake manifold. It could be on a, the back of the intake manifold for something aftermarket. It could be in the uh, tube right before the throttle body. 
Uh, some people may have a turbo system on the vehicle and they want to route this uh, through the fender to keep it out of the way. So we've put that on a plug so you can determine where you'd like your, your IAT sensor. Alternator is done the same way. My people. Alternator's done the same way. Um, you can add an extension harness on here to, uh, there's a few different mounting options for the coyote alternator. There's top mount, low mount, uh, if you got a, a coyote out of a truck. So we put this on here so that you can uh, choose where it goes. And a lot of people are running one wire alternators these days and they don't even need this control. In which case, this is 12 volts and PWM if you're running a uh, a one wire alternator, you could use this for a boost controller if, if you'd like to do so. We have a plug here called uh, uh, flex and fuel pressure. Uh, you have everything necessary for a fuel pressure sensor or a flex fuel sensor right on the back of the harness or any other sensor that you'd like to wire to this. Again, uh, you'll be able to option this harness as either cable or drive-by wire. Um, It'll be coming shortly. Thanks for joining me talking about our coyote harness. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, give us a like, subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more content, and uh, give us ideas for videos if you want to see something else.